cropping up stockers. Zach the stock cropper. I'm still alive. I know I haven't put any content out in a couple months here, but we've been uh, slaving away with harvest essentially for the last uh, seven and a half weeks, uh, pretty much straight through. So hoping to, to kick some content out today to talk about all of the things we learned throughout our harvest. Uh, I've kind of leaked some of that stuff over Twitter, but want to do kind of a comprehensive summary. The only thing I'm not going to talk about is the thing we don't have harvested, which is what you see behind me, which is our 60 and 90 inch corn with soybeans planted in between. So like a lot of places in the Midwest, we shut up early for winter uh, about a week ago, and we've gotten about uh, oh, three to five inches of snow since then. And uh, the plan was is we were gonna harvest this corn by hand and then pick it with the bean head that's still sitting over here, pick the beans in between. Um, it looks like everything's still here. We haven't had, uh, we haven't had a bunch of uh, shatter loss or beans falling out of the pods yet or animals. So we're still hoping to get some data, but we need to let this snow melt off. We're supposed to get some warmer temps in uh, the next uh, the next 10 days here to hopefully do that. And then we'll get this data. But I hope, uh, I'm sorry again for the delay and stuff. I've had a couple people message me wondering where the harvest video is. Um, we just had a long harvest run and getting all of our strip tilling and cover crops done. And then we're hauling grain uh, to try to pay some bills December 1st here. So, uh, but today's Sunday, I'm gonna take some time to try to assemble uh, everything we've learned it's been a great year appreciate everybody's interest and hope you enjoy the 2022 official stock cropper harvest video so i haven't really shown this strip intercrop field um in any other of the youtube videos that i've put out to this point um this is something i've been wanting to do for a while this first year i've committed an entire farm to strip intercropping. Um, so a little bit of background, uh, you know, my goal is eventually to get one of my own fields set up to do stock cropping on like an 80 acre parcel. And so I made the decision, um, this is uh, one of our better farms. It's got pattern tile every 60 foot. It's got uh, really good weed control on it. So this was the best candidate for picking a farm uh, to do that on. So that is uh, why we picked it. Um, I went with a uh, full season corn, um, 111 day, and that got zapped. Well, I should back up. We planted this last um, because it took a lot of screwing around with the planter to get it set up right between the fertilizer and the different row units. Um, and so we planted this after we had everything else in the ground about the 15th or 16th of May, I think. And um, it's looked good all year, it's just the fact that it got zipped, nipped by frost at the end. It might, it might actually have hurt the beans a little bit too, um, compared to our other stuff, but uh, the yields don't seem to be that far else or far off of what we're getting in our, our uh, third regular 30 inch beans. But the corn, I think, was probably about half milk line when it got hit, so I'm expecting a little bit of a, a hit there. We, we're not going to have a good check. Uh, really against anything else in a normal 30 inch with this late of maturity on the farm. So um, we'll just have to see uh, how good it does and do the comparison on the 30 inch regular bean yield with the drop off we have in these uh, strips from the shading and see if the edge effect on the corn uh, outshines that. So as you can see, we're shooting the gap. <coughs> um, I had some folks uh, worried about the width of my head and how I was going to slide through 20 foot, uh, but it really hasn't been a problem. I planted this so that the outside four rows of my 16 row planter uh, had beans in them. So I do have a guest row here, so some spots where I was shifting with my RTK line, I'm a little narrow or a little wide, but uh, as a wise man uh, once said, it doesn't seem to bother. So. Um, so the big question was how uh, how is this going to yield uh, with all this shading? You can see it's a great example of the shading you get. It's a little bit more exaggerated with the uh, the lower sun angle now. Um, but you know what are these rows out here going to do that live in shade half the day over here and half the day over here? And uh, it's hanging in there really really well uh, right now. The strips are averaging uh, just under 70 bushel an acre, which um, is better than what I thought, but everything that we've had this year has been better than I thought. Uh, 
we got nine inches of rain in August and that really saved the day. Um, especially on this farm, this was the driest farm that I had. Uh, and I, I am concerned with how the corn is gonna do next door. I don't know if it's going to be as good because this is corn on corn, the only corn on corn I have. This whole field was corn last year. But uh, yeah, for the first stab on intercrop so far, we'll see, we're only a couple rounds in. Um, but this field's pretty consistent and I, I'm guessing that it's probably gonna hang in there as we move across the field, but a really, really good start uh, for the strip intercrop. Um, it'll be interesting to see, and I will say, uh, I'm sure people will ask, well, what would, what would, did you have any beans on the outside? And we did. Um, they averaged about 75, so there's about a five bushel hit. Um, it looks like, at least from the initial data that I have here, um, and so, you know, five bushel times uh, 14, uh, what is that? Uh, is that 80, 80 or 90 bucks an acre uh, shortcoming? So if you take that uh, divided by $6 corn, you gotta make up 15 bushel that you wanna have otherwise with the edge effect. That's doable. Um, we'll just have to see how good this corn is and see if we actually gain anything from doing this or not. So one of the problems I've had uh, doing this intercrop is the fact that when I planted it, I had my planter shaft uh, set for corn, and with a Kinsey or a John Deere planter, it's always five times that base population. So I normally plant my beans around 100 to 105,000, and these got dropped at 170,000. So uh, there's way more plants, there's way more lodging, and then there's this phenomenon that keeps happening right on cue. It's just made harvesting really, really frustrating in the fact that I get this wrapping from all the lodge plants on that are spindly on the outside row and I have to stop and reverse it to get them unwound and then I start it back up again. And sometimes it works and then like that it doesn't. And then I get really, really pissed and, and then eventually I have to be a real farmer and get out of the cab to address it. But Anyway, I wanted to show some of the uh, the bad with the good. Um, try one more time here, but I think that you know the, the simple solution is just take the time to get the planter set up straight so that we're not uh, planting so many extra plants uh, because this outside row really does get spindly in its search for life. Um, that is a real a real deal, and so it might be something that. Uh, you know, we actually plant, uh, we have different row populations to limit the spindliness of these things because the wrapping is uh, really, a, really a problem. Um, it's really slowed me up with harvest and uh, glad this is my last field. I've only got about four rounds left, but I'm gonna be ready to, to be done and be on the corn after this. So I'm bringing the combine home here uh, <laughs> after finishing up the intercrop field and uh, yields turned out uh, really well. Uh, I think uh, when it all shakes out, when I was looking at our weights versus uh, the yield monitor to see how close we came, uh, the intercrop yield was right between 69 and 70 bushels an acre, uh, which was fantastic. Uh, probably five to 10 bushel better than I thought it would be. Um, and the area outside, we, we bordered the field with uh, beans all the way around, and so the beans that weren't in strips averaged about 75. So uh, about a five bushel hit, it looked like on average, four to five bushels, depending on the two comparison strips on either side that we'd looked at. Uh, so about, I think uh, roughly $65, $70 an acre difference. So that is the number that our corn has to uh, out yield it by. Uh, roughly, I think about 12 or 13 bushel an acre uh, versus what it would have been normally. So we'll see how, I, I know what this farm has done in the past. Um, I know what our, our best is. Uh, I don't, I'm not quite sure that we're going to hit it. The corn looks okay, but getting hit with uh, the frost on that 111 day corn, the kernels 
just don't look like they're gonna fill out like what some of our other stuff has so we'll see but I learned a lot of uh, good things uh, that I want to change for next year I'm definitely gonna drop the soybean population so I don't have that wrapping that really really sucked um, and I'm gonna go with an earlier corn hybrid uh, to make sure and I'm gonna plant it earlier too we planted this farm last because we wanted to get everything else blasted in um, and then we kind of did this one at the end next year I want to plant it first and I think you know I think the early planting uh, we had a we planted beans first and then came back and planted corn and then finished with beans and I think that early planting was worth about probably five to eight bushel an acre from what we what we saw uh, between the, the two planting dates and the farms we added on so I uh, want to push the intercrop first next year and we can do it on that farm because it's pattern tiled and usually one of the first ones we can get across so anyway uh, a successful uh, first stab at beans some things we learned um, and we'll see we'll keep you updated on what the corn does uh, here probably in a couple weeks all right well we are uh, in the intercrop corn now and uh, into the full season stuff. I got Dan the man, my combine uh, operator here that uh, let me actually play farmer and be in control. Uh, I've been trucking here most of the morning. But wanted to give you uh, a show here of what we're seeing with the intercrop. So it's, uh, it's, it's decent, it's not awesome. Uh, I guess is my, my reaction to stuff. We are averaging about 254, 255 right now uh, seeing some pops up for 300 I was hoping this was going to average uh, 300 this is 111 day corn um, but you can tell it really got zapped hard the cobs are really spongy it's hard to get it off the, the cob we've got everything ground down pretty tight um, but still it's not a loss uh, nobody's going to kick you out of bed for eating crackers with 255 bushel corn and considering this was corn on corn um, again, we didn't have the high population on the outside. I don't know if that would have helped us this year or not because we were so dry. This, uh, this farm was sitting in probably the driest sliver of the county. Uh, so still, still a, a win, I guess, from, uh, from that standpoint that we could get by with as little rain as we had and still crank, crank this out and then get frosted and not finish. Um, so I'm encouraged and I think we will, uh, you know, next this was the last planted field last year for this year I should say next year this will be the first this field sits on 60 foot pattern tile so usually this can be the first thing we'll get across uh, last year I just didn't want to horse around with changing the planter up uh, with the fertilizer system and the, the units right out of the gate I thought it'd be easier to just plant beans or corn first and so but this next year we will set up to do this first. We're gonna probably put a 2.8 or a 3.1 beam and uh, go for some full season corn and make sure we hopefully get it in the ground uh, the middle to the end of April next year and not uh, be nipped with the frost in this system. So, you know, again, the whole idea with uh, pissing around with doing all the full 80 acres is the, uh, the hope is that this will be the template a couple years from now to do our first uh, field scale level of stock cropper barns uh, with a 20 foot width that'll be working in between and also next year you know we're going to be rotating into this bean stubble and it won't be corn on corn and i think our goal of uh, hitting 300 bushel uh, average in these strips will will be achievable we'll get our sprocket set for cranking the population on the outside early planting date uh, I'm encouraged. So Dan, you've been around farming a hell of a long time. What do you think of this crazy ass system? What? Yeah, it's all right, but I don't know. Have you ever picked corn this good before though? No. That makes it kind of fun. Yeah, it is. It is. And you don't have to count rows. That was the other yeah, thing that Dan true. liked. That's so, true. See, even the old guys can get into strip intercropping and Dan is, would you, would you endorse this, Dan? <laughs> What's that? Would you endorse this? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah absolutely. The Dan Swearingen's uh, stamp of approval. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to break down the comparison or the best comparison that I can make with what I have for acres uh, to compare the regular production on 30 inch 50-50 uh, corn soybeans versus 50-50 intercrop to see 
was there an advantage to this? So all I did was, and you can argue with this comparison, I took my average yield on corn across all the rest of my acres and my average yield on soybeans across all the rest of the acres. So 230 and 72 times, you know, 650 corn and $14 beans. I just picked arbitrary numbers. Um, and then average that against the intercrop production levels that we had with 255 bushel. And granted, this is corn on corn yield. This is all corn on bean yield here. Um, so a, a nice substantial jump there with a tougher system on a drier farm, blah, blah, blah. I already talked about that in the video. Uh, and then 70 times 14 and 650. What we come out to is I, these, these uh, acre projections on each crop. And then what I did was what is the, the net difference between that rotation on average on a per acre, a total farm per acre. And we had $1,250 average revenue uh, for each, for averaging each crop and $1,320. So roughly a net gain of $70 an acre for the intercrop uh, production system versus regular. So that sounds nice, but honestly, in this type of a year, uh, 70 bucks an acre is a market move, you know, for a single day um, in corn and beans. So the thing that makes this really interesting though is that uh, I'm going to allude to shortly, you know, we, re we were over 300 bushel an acre, which was our goal in our stock cropper system. I'm gonna talk about shortly here in the video. If we were able to get this up, which I think we will get it closer to 300 bushel uh, an acre here, that tips this thing about $150 more net gain. So we're talking uh, instead of $70, we're talking more uh, at least with these yield levels and price levels, about $225 an acre average uh, between corn and soybean revenue uh, for a net gain with the intercrop production system over regular. Obviously, this is going to come down if commodity prices come down, but it's all relative. Um, so this has my attention. Um, I may be putting more acres into this in the future, but we'll see what it looks like next year when we flip it into a true corn and soybean rotation. But Wanted to share the actual number. There's no BS with this. Uh, the numbers are what they are, and hopefully, hopefully you find this stuff useful. All right, here we go, folks. A lot of work went into this stuff over the last year. Today's the day of truth where we see what we learn. Stock crop for 2022. Okay, somehow I only shot nine seconds of video when I was harvesting the uh, stock crop or intercrop corn that we had planted next to the lanes. Um, so I wanted to give a little context because I didn't give any commentary when I shot this. So uh, this, these were four row intercropper strips and we actually did have the higher population. We had about 46,000 on the outside row, 35,000 on the inside too. And it looked really, really good all year. Um, I knew it was going to be better than what our intercropping corn look like I just that we just uh, shared the video with from the 80 acre field. Um, this stuff just looked like it responded from the higher outside pop. Uh, and the brass tacks, when I weighed the four strips of four row corn that we had, uh, it came out to average right at 303 bushel an acre. So uh, it, which was nice because that was my goal. Uh, it was the goal for the big field. We didn't hit it on the big field, but that, you know, what we had here also wasn't corn on corn. This was um, corn that was grown uh, primarily on everything that was left over from where the stock cropper barn ran across this last year. So all the animal manure that was placed here uh, was utilized by this crop with the exception of nitrogen. And we put on uh, probably more nitrogen than we needed, but we were trying to stay consistent across all of the plots uh, to take that variable out of the equation for being, you know, too short one way or the other, uh, but that got about 100 and I think uh, 40 units of nitrogen uh, with liquid UAN that we applied with the uh, little Suzuki mini truck. So 303 bushel, not too shabby, hit our goal and uh, gives me a uh, promise to move ahead with um, that in the future.
So we are doing the 60 inch twins right now. We've already done a couple numbers. Uh, and the rough math looks very, very, very interesting so far. I'm not going to uh, say anything because I've done a couple of just rough calculations so far. Uh, but it's good. Unless I'm doing my math wrong, so we'll see. But uh, this is what it's looking like. We go 250 feet. We're taking uh, essentially, you know, a 60 inch pass where we've got four rows and then we stop and we go back and wave, take uh, moisture measurements as well. So here we are now in the 90 inch corn. We just finished the 60s up and uh, this is where we had the cow chow planted in between that got terminated by the frost. Right next to it, you can see the nitrogen builder mix is still doing well uh, with the uh, species that are a lot more cold hardy. They've taken a couple uh, mid teen mornings and uh, still cooking with gas. So, again, each one of these entries was 250 foot long, and we've got three different sets. This is in 16,000. Uh, seeds per acre, uh, about 30 inch row equivalent, so I think about 11,000 uh, in this schematic. Uh, figuring two thirds of that. So we've got to do this 36 times across this plot of uh, pick and then go away. But we do it for the people. Alright, that is a wrap. Uh, I've got to introduce my my weigher, my weight master, my oldest daughter. She uh, was nice enough to volunteer to come out and be my weigh person today, which probably sped me up by two times. And I'm still trying to figure out what it is that she wants from dad that she would come on a Sunday afternoon and volunteer to take weights and, and moistures. Is it Taylor Swift tickets? Sure. It's probably a pretty good guess. But, uh, she's a good kid. She's going to Iowa State next year. She's going to major, what, in business, probably. And uh, it's been an awesome afternoon. We've learned a lot of cool things. Uh, the results are very consistent. I'm looking forward to compiling them and, uh, and putting them out. But uh, the thing that I would say here is that uh, this twin row wide row corn is the real deal and uh, needs a serious look at. So next what you're gonna see is the actual results, but uh, I got a grin on my face for a reason. Okay, so this is the, the final data that I had out of the comparison of 60 inch twins, 90 inch twins versus a 30 inch, 30 inch conventional corn block. And we had uh, three or four different hybrids that you can see on the slide that we uh, got a comparison to see how different hybrids respond to these uh, planting window widths as well as three different population blocks uh, kind of a low medium high to see uh, How different hybrids would respond to different population environments in these different systems So a lot of stuff to uh, decipher here. The only other piece of info that I should denote is that uh, I've said this a lot online this year. We did not plant this with a twin row planter. We used a regular 30 inch row planter, shut rows off in between and planted, got a twin row by planting uh, twice, essentially in on, onto the edge of the strip each time on either side of the strip. We were kind of shooting for uh, an eight inch uh, twin row, essentially to be on each side of the strip we made with a strip till unit. Um, we were manually driving that, it was kind of hokey. So sometimes we were right on top of each other and sometimes we were dead on. I think if we had, uh, next year we will be setting up a planter that's an actual twin row planter to do this uh, with the success that we've seen here. Um, and so we'll take that variability out. So keep in mind when you're looking at the data that this was not planted with a twin row planter. Um, the nitrogen rates were the same across the, all of, uh, all of the, uh, the, the different treatments. And the only other thing of note is pay attention that I screwed up when I planted. I, didn't, I wasn't thinking to keep my population the same. Uh, in the fact that uh, on the 90 inch twins versus everything else, 
So I've listed the effective population that I had uh, per acre, which you can see is lower. So I didn't have this, I didn't have enough plants out there for it to be apples to apples. But I still included the data because I think it's interesting how well the 90 inch twin row corn did, um, considering that. So just a couple brief takeaways, and I'll let you make your own observations looking at the data, but there is a pretty consistent trend uh, with uh, the fact that um, the lower population, the higher population, there was usually a pretty linear trend with an increase in yield. Not in every situation, um, but uh, for most of the most of the entries, uh, the, the 36,000 pop uh, was the, uh, or uh, trended to be the best, especially in the, uh, the 60 and the 90 inch uh, twins. In, or the 60 and the 30 inch uh, corn, 90 inch twins uh, had a little bit uh, wonkier stuff with the uh, the middle population in some cases being the highest. So um, interesting stuff there. The other thing I would say is, uh, you know, it was encouraging to have a couple of the numbers, especially the 953, if you look at that one, um, when you look at uh, the yield difference between that and a 60 inch twin versus a 30 inch conventional, uh, being essentially parity, um, you know, that's, that's really, really encouraging. And some of the others, you know, if you look at the 0075, there's quite a bit of a difference there between, uh, sixties, uh, to 30, which you would expect to see some differences in hybrids. So I think it's going to be important that, you know, if we're going to do this, that we make sure we understand what hybrids are, you know, set up to really flex in this. But I do think it is possible to, you know, I guess my takeaway is to widen things out. Um, and then open up the possibility of put planting a grazing mix um, in between or a nitrogen builder mix or doing, you know, something in between that gap. You know, next year, the, the sweet spot that I'm really hoping to uh, examine would be something perhaps in between 60 and 90s because my observations this year, along with a couple others uh, that were here this summer, I really think that um, there could be a sweet spot somewhere in between there where you could really uh, open up a window wide enough where you could really create some value in between more so because the biggest limitation in my opinion with the 60 inch twins is it's really tough to get a substantial amount of growth um, unless you're establishing earlier in the season than what we did. Um, I saw a tweet from uh, Eric Miller over in Eastern Iowa who's been doing the 60 inch twin thing for a couple of years and he had some really nice growth uh, that but he I think in the tweet said he established it in I think the middle part of June um, so make sure you check him out on Twitter uh, search Eric Miller and uh, for somebody that's been doing this on a field scale basis and doing a nice job with it as well but uh, um, I I think uh, I want to we're going to experiment with a lot more stuff next year we're going to build a planter this winter so that we're actually set up to doing it so it's not so wonky like we had uh, this last year but um, interesting data uh, it's got me going and want me to keep pushing in this direction to try to figure out how can we change the arrangement of fields and leverage sunlight and uh, windows of opportunity and time to try to get more rather than just putting more inputs out into the field how can we increase yield and profitability with just changing how things are put together in the field so uh, I think that's it for my commentary on the 60, 90, and 30 inch conventional block. So a really long video, uh, but I hope you enjoy uh, the information that we that we have shared. This was a lot of work this year to put this plot in way more than what we've done the last two years. Um, you know, but my reasoning and purpose for kind of expanding beyond just the stock cropper barns themselves is to, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about stock cropper, uh, but I'm also excited in finding other things that are going to be more broad acre fits than just what stock cropper is going to be in using this theme of different arrangements rather than just 30 inch corn or 30 inch beans to try to unlock ways for farmers to make, uh, more efficient generation of yield and uh, better utilization of resources. Um, because uh, when, you know, well, we're already going into it now where we're getting scarcity with uh, the prices of inputs. And if prices start to, uh, to rebound and go back to where they were when we started the stock cropper, I think these type of concepts are gonna be incredibly valuable. That's why I'm taking time uh, to invest in trying to learn this stuff and sharing it with people so uh, 
so that when uh, when those times come and they will come again that uh, that we have some ideas to try for people that are wanting to uh, to do something rather than just go to your retailer and hope that they're going to provide um, you know that average three to five bushel bump uh, by buying a solution in a jug so anyway uh, thanks for following sitting through this long video sometimes I get long-winded I know that I just uh, that's my nature but I appreciate everyone's uh, support throughout the year and uh, if you have any ideas for things that you want to see tested next year you know we are not a research farm we're not getting paid to do any of this nobody's donating anything to us we're doing this because we love it and we like sharing it with people um so it's within reason but if you've got some reasonable ideas uh that you think that we can implement around what we're doing i'm all ears hit me up leave me something in the comments send me a message at the stock cropper at gmail.com uh but again thanks for watching and uh, we will have more content coming soon